So just for everyone coming in, we'll get started in a couple minutes just to give some, some time. Oh, someone thought it was still in person. Wait, do you think people, are you guys, did you guys go to the room? Or Yeah, I'm in Seawall right now. <laughs> I, was, I, was, I was shocked, yeah. That's our bad. Yeah, we found out that we, like the event had to go online pretty last minute. So it might not be on all the flyers, but I'm, is the room open at least? Like other, are other people there? Yeah, I'm in 1304. Okay, so you are. Only yeah, I'm fine. No attendee. worries. <laughs> My bad. I'm so sorry about that. Okay, I think we can get started. Thank you so much for everyone who showed up today. Um, we're gonna run through a quick databases workshop. And I just wanna thank Hack for Impact for working with WCS today on this workshop. Um, yeah, so we're just gonna get started and introduce ourselves really quickly. I'm Sophia and I'm part of the WCS Explorations Committee and I'm a CS major studying CS. <laughs> Um, I'm Esther. I'm also part of the WCS um, Explorations Committee, and I'm majoring in Statistics and Computer Science. 
I'm Ellie. I'm also a major in computer science and I'm part of WCS Explorations. I'm Shreya. I'm also part of WCS Explorations and I'm majoring in computer science. Hey guys, my name is Ian. I'm in Hack for Impact, where I'm on the tech committee, uh, where we lead these types of workshops, and I'm majoring in st statistics and CS. Yeah, I'm also a part of the Hack for Impact tech committee, and I'm majoring in computer science and philosophy. Hi, everybody. I'm Andrew. I'm also a member of the tech committee. Uh, I'm majoring in computer science. Yeah, Hack for Impact tech committee. Okay, cool. So um, we're just going to get started by explaining what a database is, if you guys want to take it. Yeah, so we'll start off with just saying what is a database. So a database is basically an organized collection of data, and it's typically stored electronically in a computer system, and it basically just serves to make data management easier. It's usually controlled by a database management system, which serves as kind of an interface between the database and its end users or programs. And some examples of this are MySQL or Oracle database. And there are also different types of databases and you can see them listed out on this slide. So now we're gonna be introducing a database program called MongoDB, um, which we'll also be using in today's upcoming activity. Um, so MongoDB is a document-oriented, no SQL database program uh, that is used for high volume data storage. There are many benefits of using MongoDB, some of which are listed here and will be shown in the video. Um, I'll briefly go over some, but they will be explained in more detail in the upcoming slides. So firstly, instead of using tables and rows to store data, MongoDB uses collections and documents, um, which aligns better with how developers construct classes and objects. The data model in MongoDB also allows you to represent hierarchical relationships, store arrays, and other complex structures more easily. Furthermore, MongoDB allows for indexing, which can be used to improve the performance of searches. Uh, now we will show a brief video about MongoDB. MongoDB is based on the document model a fundamentally different model than traditional relational databases. The document model is the key design choice we made, and it's why developers love working with MongoDB. Let's walk through what the different models look like in practice. A relational database is fundamentally Microsoft Excel on steroids. Both are made of rows and columns, organized into tables or sheets. Let's say we're building a patient record-keeping system for a doctor's office, and we're going to build it in Microsoft Excel. First, Let's look at a small piece of that system, the contact information for the patients. It starts simply enough with a sheet that has a row for each patient. That row has a unique patient ID number, their first and last name, email address, phone number, and home address. But what if we want to add a second phone number for a patient? Maybe their work number, or their cell phone number, or even an emergency contact number. We could just add more columns, but the same issue comes up for addresses, work, home, and even previous addresses are things you might need. If we just keep adding columns for all the patient's contact information, we'll eventually have a bloated, mostly empty, inefficient table like this. So instead, in our Excel model, we'll create a separate sheet for phone numbers, and each row in that sheet is just a phone number, the patient ID it refers to, and a label like home. We'll do the same thing for addresses. We already need to go to three different sheets just to look at a single patient, and we're only at the tip of the iceberg, and haven't even thought about any medical data yet. Add in more sheets for medications, more sheets for office visits, more sheets for emergency contacts, lab results. You can see how this gets out of hand quickly. This is exactly how developers work with data in relational databases. In real world applications, it's common to have the data for a single thing, like a patient, spread out over dozens of tables. This adds a massive amount of complexity to the application, and that has three big drawbacks. The first is that it's just frankly hard for people maintaining the application to understand. Second, it makes adding features harder because there's so much more to account for. And third, pulling data from so many places is inefficient and the applications need to have code to deal with this. Imagine if this was done in the real world and the doctor's staff had to pull names from one cabinet, phone numbers from another, and addresses from yet another cabinet. You can see how complicated, error prone, and slow that would be. MongoDB takes an entirely different approach. Data is stored in records we call documents 
And just like physical medical records, one patient's document can have three phone numbers, two addresses, and 20 prescriptions, and it can live right next to another patient document that only has one phone number, one address, and no prescriptions. Records aren't restricted to having the same number of columns. Documents let you structure data in a way that is efficient for computers to process and natural and easy for humans to read. This is incredibly powerful for developers because they don't have to make their applications accommodate the needs of the database anymore. MongoDB accommodates them so their applications can store data in a natural way. It also means that they can adapt, adding new data when they need to without worrying that a simple change is going to break everything. In addition to the document model, MongoDB is fundamentally different from legacy databases because it natively knows how to coordinate multiple servers to store data. That makes MongoDB something called a distributed database, and it allows MongoDB to provide three features that developers and architects would otherwise have to build from themselves, saving them massive amounts of risk and work. First, fault tolerance is natively built into MongoDB. By keeping redundant copies of the same data on different servers, a single server failure doesn't affect the application. Second, MongoDB seamlessly scales across multiple servers to store and process data. So as data volumes and performance requirements grow, you can just add more servers instead of upgrading to million dollar mainframes. This is also great for cloud environments where spreading load across lots of machines is by far the best way. And third, it lets you move data to where you need it so you can keep data near users around the globe for fast access. The combination of MongoDB's document model and distributed systems components is what gives MongoDB such an advantage over relational databases. Beyond offering the leading modern database, we've also built management tools to help operations teams provision, configure, secure, monitor, backup, restore, and upgrade MongoDB clusters. This is critical to making MongoDB suitable for the most demanding use cases and for organizations with strict SLAs and operations requirements. We designed MongoDB for the cloud, and MongoDB has been widely deployed in the cloud for some time. But more and more customers are interested in building their applications with components offered as a service. To meet this need, we released MongoDB Atlas, our database as a service offering. Atlas enables our customers to consume MongoDB as a service without having to worry about managing the database. MongoDB Atlas is available on the leading cloud platforms. All right. All right, so what does a MongoDB database look like? So in the video, they mentioned that MongoDB databases contain collections, which contain documents. And in this diagram right here, you'll see that there's a database on the screen. And its name is sample underscore mflix. In this database, the collections are listed in the table below. And there are five collections here, comments, movies, sessions, theaters, and users. Each of the collections stores a list of documents that have a common schema related to the collection they're a part of. So the comments collection will have a list of documents with each document representing data that would be that would represent a comment. So the comment document number one would have perhaps a user that made the comment, the text of the comment, and the movie that that comment is on. Now MongoDB's set of collections and documents are very useful and they're all stored in one database. Normally you'll have one database per project. And if you want to have another database for another project, you'll create it separately and we'll have a separate list of collections and documents. Um, so as Andrew just mentioned, in MongoDB data is stored as documents, and these documents are stored in something called JavaScript object notation format, in other words, JSON. Um, and so as you can see here in this example, this is one object, and in an object, there are multiple fields um, that describe that object. So for example, this object could be um, representing a person, and there's different fields such as name, age, status, and groups. And essentially what this format is, is that colon in between name and sue separates the key, which is what the field name is, and the value. So the value of that key is sue. And to separate each field, to separate name and age, there's a comma in between them. Um, so here there are four fields. Cool. So on the next two slides, we'll cover two different schemas that we'll be working with in today's uh, workshop, which is really cool. And like Rita said, all this really boils down to is key value pairs, but it can get really interesting, right? This is object-oriented programming. So those values can take on a lot of different data types. For example, what I have for you is a document in the movies collection, uh, 
my favorite movie, The Avengers. And you can see all this different information being compiled. For example, you have a IMDb object that has three of its own key value pairs. You have under that a year integer value and you have a genres array list uh, storing a list of strings. So you can see just how nuanced and dynamic uh, MongoDB documents can get. And that's what makes them really cool and what makes relational uh, databases maybe a thing of the past uh, and why NoSQL really represents, I would say, real world data. So we're going to be looking at these later on. So you can refer to this later, but right here we have a movies document. And then on the next slide, uh, if you can show that, we have the comments document. So this one's a lot simpler. Uh, it just has, for example, a string name and email, a string text, and then a date field. Uh, one thing I want to highlight is you can see this really cool thing called the ID underscore ID. That's a really intrinsic part of MongoDB, and that's how MongoDB uh, identifies unique documents. Uh, so you can see, for example, in the comments collection, every comment has its unique ID, but it also refers to a unique movie ID that that comment is covering. So IDs are how you can kind of uh, connect all your different schemas uh, across uh, different collections within your same database. Uh, and that's kind of like, if you think of SQL, you can kind of translate that to the idea of joints. Uh, so we'll be using those ideas actually in the workshop, but that's a pretty uh, complex feature. Really what this all boils down to is key value pairs that uh, create your objects. So uh, you've seen a little bit about what MongoDB looks like. Uh, don't, don't worry if it's a bit confusing right now, because I think you just got to get your hands dirty and that's what we're going to do pretty soon. Uh, cool. Yeah, so to better prepare you for our upcoming activity, um, we've provided a list of useful functions and operators. Each of these functions, um, the header is like a hyperlink to the documentation on the MongoDB website that you can go through and explore. I think the slides were shared in the chat, um, but I'll quickly go over what they do and some examples. So first thing we have find, um, which returns a pointer to the documents that match the query criteria arguments. Um, for instance, if we take a look at this example, um, this is a hypothetical movies collection that has a date field. Um, so this use of the find function um, return all movies that were released after the year 2000. And next we have find one, which returns only one document that satisfies the criteria in the first argument. After that, we have count documents, which returns an integer showing the number of documents that match the query. For example, uh, let's say we had a CS classes collection. Uh, this line of code would return the number of CS classes that have a class number of greater than 233. Um, lastly, we have ID, which was mentioned before, um, but this is basically a globally unique object ID that acts as the primary key for documents. Um, here we have some important operators. So firstly, we have less than, less than or equal to, uh, greater than and greater than or equal to. Um, and these are pretty self-explanatory. I think we had some examples on the previous slide. Next we have and, which allows you to find documents that match uh, both conditions that you're searching for. Uh, the following example searches for documents in the inventory collection that have a price less than $15 and greater than $199. Uh, all is an operator that matches arrays that have all elements specified in the query. So the following line of code queries the inventory collection for documents um, where the value of the tags field is an array whose elements include appliance, school, and book. And lastly, we have in, uh, which matches any of the values specified in an array. So this last example finds all the documents in the inventory collection where the value of the quantity field is either five or 15. Yeah, so now that we've gone through a few of the concepts, we're gonna jump right into our activity. Um, we're gonna be doing a crossword today. So essentially you're gonna, you're gonna be asked a bunch of questions like how many movies has Walter Edwin starred in? And then using the database, you're gonna be able to find the answers and then fill out the crossword. And the ultimate goal of this activity is to figure out the answer to why are object-oriented programmers so wealthy? Okay, so now we're gonna go into breakout rooms. So just give us a few minutes while we figure that out. Um, and if you just came in, let us know so that we can send you the slideshow. So just to go over what we're gonna do in these breakout rooms, the first thing is we're gonna send you a slideshow that we have right here. Uh, and it'll go over the installation instructions. Pretty much MongoDB is really simple. You just have to install its command line interface. So to do that, uh, there's just this one, uh, it's just think of it as like a downloading software. Uh, and then from there, we're gonna be interacting with MongoDB through the command line. Uh, so you guys are gonna be going hacker mode today. 
Uh, and don't worry if like you don't know any programming language. That's what makes MongoDB really simple uh, and why we're using it. Uh, if you do know programming languages, this is really similar to JavaScript, but JavaScript is a really just uh, uh, simple functional programming language. So uh, don't worry, you don't need programming uh, expertise to, to do today's activity. And that's what we're gonna uh, hopefully teach you guys. Uh, yeah. I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create, I'm gonna let participants choose rooms. Um, just make sure that you guys like disperse evenly so that we have people in each room. And I think we can do three breakout rooms. Uh, yes. One for each hack for impact and WCS member. All right. So yeah, before we go in breakout rooms, we'll send the slides once again. So if you're joining just now, uh, uh, and then from the breakout rooms, we'll go over all the installation. So don't don't sweat it. Uh, yeah, we'll also send you the the crossword. So just give us two. If you guys want to head over to the breakout rooms, like go right ahead. I'll come in right afterwards. Are they open? Oh, they're not open yet. That's yeah, my bad. I don't think they're open. Yeah. <laughs> Oops. So we'll have me, uh, I'll be in breakout room one. Uh, Rhea, can you join room two? And Andrew, join room three. And then Esther, Ellie, and Shreya, you guys can hop into whichever room you want. Just make sure, maybe like Esther go into one, Ellie go into two, Shreya go into three. Um, also, I think you might have to move people around because I think one breakout room has a lot more people compared to. Yeah, I'll, I'll move people around really quickly. Hopefully they do not mind that I'm taking them out. Cool. Yeah, so for those of you rolling in, uh, in, the com in the chat, uh, you can see two important links. One is to the slideshow, uh, and one is to the crossword puzzle. So you guys. Can you resend the crossword puzzle link again, please? Definitely. Uh, yeah. Uh, so yeah, I'll send that right here. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm just waiting for screen share privileges. Uh, okay, I got it. Uh, okay, so I'm gonna share my screen. So let's go over what you guys need to do to get started. So like I said, we need to install the MongoDB command line interface. It's very simple. Uh, I included this on slide 13. Uh, you just have to go to this link. The one thing, so it's very simple for Windows. You just need the installer. For a Mac, the best way to end up installing it is using Homebrew. Uh, let me ask you, are there any Mac people here that don't have Homebrew on their computers right now. We can skip this part then, uh, if so. Uh, but if you don't have Homebrew, you have to run an extra command. And Homebrew is just like a package installer for Mac. But for Windows, uh, I recommend guys go to slide 13 and then just click on that link and uh, download the installer. And once you've uh, downloaded uh, the command line interface, maybe send me like a chat message just so I can see where you guys are at. Because uh, from there on out, that's pretty much all you need. Uh, and then it will be, will be good to go. Uh, so yeah, look, I'll, I'll ask one more time. Are there any Mac users that don't have a uh, homebrew installed? If so, you can just chat me, DM me, and we can discuss it. Really, it's just that slide 12, you just have to run that one extra command. Uh, but if you're Windows or Mac with homebrew, then just go straight to slide 13. OK. OK, thank you. Yeah. Okay, great guys. Yeah, I see some of you have already messaged me. Uh, okay, so yeah, for you guys uh, that don't have homebrew, thanks for letting me know. Uh, do you see this one command? It's uh, Ruby E, uh, that curl command. Where you're gonna wanna type it in is in your terminal. 
uh, and we'll be using this terminal later on, but every uh, Mac has a terminal, right? So to open up the terminal, the easiest way to do that is command uh, spacebar, and then you can just search for the terminal. Uh, and ter terminal is kind of the, the command line. Uh, for Windows, you guys will be using either the command prompt, uh, PowerShell that you have a lot to choose from. Uh, you can even use uh, git bash. Uh, uh, so uh, those are all uh, installed. So yeah, uh, here I can guys I can be my DM here. So yeah, is that clear? Uh, Anirudh and Annalisa uh, opening up the terminal, you can do command space uh, and then switch for terminal. You'll get this thing and then here I can do it with you. Uh, all you wanna do is just copy this command. And it'll take a second. So, yeah. And it, it, yeah, uh, this is kind of an optional part of the workshop. But I feel like if you guys have the opportunity to get to download the stuff, I think it'll make uh, this workshop a lot more, uh, a lot more beneficial. So yeah, feel free to follow along. I'll be doing the things with you. Uh, and yeah, just send me once you have MongoDB installed. Uh, so your terminal says it's updating Homebrew. That's a good question. Let me. Let me And I actually noticed this is maybe not the best command to run. Uh, uh, I don't think you need to update Homebrew as long as you can get the Mongo SH installer. So uh, I'll open up that page too to help you guys out. Sorry, yeah, I know this is a lot of setups, always the worst part of programming, I, I think. But once you overcome that, then you can get really good stuff. So yeah, this is for Windows. And honestly, if this link isn't good, I, I realize it's probably not the best link for Mac. Uh, you could do Mongo shell installation and I'll send that link. This should be best for Mac. Uh, that's what I used. Uh, yeah, so on, on Mac, all I ended up doing was using brew. Where's the brew? Oh, here, right here. Mine says no file, no such file or directory. Yeah, that's for Homebrew, if I'm right about that. Let me send you a different link. Are you trying to download Homebrew? Um, I'm trying to put the, the, those things in my terminal. Yeah, yeah. So let's not run this command. I, I realize mm -hmm. it's probably not the best command. Okay. So let, me, let me give you a different command. Okay. Uh, so install Homebrew. Okay. Uh, I'll put that in the chat. Uh, I think this is probably the best, best line to run. Uh, so try that out. Yeah, sorry about that. Uh, and honestly, we'll spend like two, three more minutes getting this set up. If you can't install Homebrew, that's totally fine. Just follow along with me and then we'll go through some examples. And while people are just working along, we can uh, we can try to figure out things there. So yeah, I sent that link. Uh, that's better for installing Homebrew. Uh, for installing MongoDB, uh, at least for Mac, I, I, I think the best way to do it uh, let me look. Yeah, install Mongo SH is what it's called. So yeah, this line is really good. Uh, if you have homebrew, all you have to type is brew install Mongo SH. So I'll send that in too. That's for Mac users. And if you're Windows, there's that installer. Okay, I'll give it. I will give everyone like two or three more minutes. This is not the most important part, uh, but it does require you do need it to. To run everything. Cool. And thanks, thanks for everyone for messaging me uh, where you're at. Uh, I have a question. Yep. Is Mon is Mongo done entirely in the command prompt? So yeah, we'll be using the command prompt. So once you've installed this Mongo SH command, right? The idea is you can use this anywhere on your computer uh, and the way to interact with it is through your command prompt. So I'm on Mac today, but for all you Windows users, uh, open up your search bar. I realize it's not what it looks like and type for command prompt. Uh, and then from there, uh, you should be able to just type in Mongo SH, pretend like this is your command prompt. So actually I'll, I'll clear for a second. So this is the best way to test if MongoDB is installed. Uh, type Mongo SH and you should just get some, uh, some text. Uh, if, if you get anything like this, uh, it should probably say error uh, connection refused. You have Mongo SH installed. And then from there we can get started. Uh, 
think of Mongo SH as the way to kind of interact with MongoDB. There's a lot of other ways to do it, uh, especially in your, for example, software. Uh, let's say you're building a website that wants to connect to the database, you would use your, for example, JavaScript or Python libraries to connect to MongoDB. Today, we're using the shell. Uh, so yeah, the best way to test it once you've done everything is just type Mongo SH in your command prompt or in your shell, uh, your terminal. Uh, and if, if it shows up, then you're good. So yeah, I'll give it, everyone one more minute. Uh, Oh yeah, I'm, I'm, you guys are giving me a lot of good responses. Yeah, so if, I, if you guys are getting any errors about writing, I don't think that should be a problem because we won't be writing to the database today. We'll just be querying. Uh, so hopefully as long as you can run the queries, uh, you'll be good. And I'll run an example query with you guys to show you what that looks like. Uh, yeah, if you guys have any more specific questions, feel free to send me a chat. You guys have already done that. Uh, if I haven't gotten to your question, uh, just send me another message. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, and I will try to help you out. Yeah, I realize honestly, these slides might not be the best way of solving your issue. So if you have a specific question, you saw how I just made some quick uh, searches, uh, that might be, might be your best solution. I noticed honestly, if you can't get homebrew on a Mac, uh, Mongo SH also offers a zip file installation. It is a bit more tedious, so I wouldn't recommend it. I really do recommend Homebrew. And honestly, if you have a Mac, Homebrew is like really like necessary uh, for doing any software uh, connection. So it's a really good thing to have. Uh, okay, I think that's good enough. I'm gonna get started, but feel free to just follow along if you're a bit uh, confused where we're at. Let me know again, and I can, I can help you once we've uh, done an example. So let's do an example. Right now we have the crossword puzzle here. I'll open it up uh, for everyone and that's in the chat. I can send the link again. Uh, the idea is we wanna query our MongoDB database. It's called sample and flicks. Uh, we showed that earlier in the slides. Uh, we wanna query it to get the answers. Uh, and across this crossword puzzle, there's a lot of easy ones. There's also a lot of hard ones. So uh, for now, let's start with an easy one. Uh, and let's, let's try to take a look at what that will look like. So for example, I think this is a really good one. How many movies has Walter Edwin starred in? So. Uh, the first thing I think you, you got to think about is what am I querying, right? So let's go back to the slides. Uh, when we're talking about movies, right, we're going to be talking about the movies collection, right? So we're not going to be querying the comments. We're not going to be querying the sessions. We're going to be querying the movies. And then from there, we want to look at, okay, how do I check, for example, where the actors show up in the movies document? Uh, and that, if you take a quick look, does anyone have any ideas? How would I figure out, you know, where, where uh, the cast or the, the actors, what, what variable would hold that data? Uh, feel free to say it out loud or send in the chat. Uh, there's a lot of things here. So this is the first step is figuring out, okay, what do I want to look at specifically to uh, answer this question? And the question is, how many movies has Walter Edwin started with? Start in? Anyone have any ideas? So we can look at, for example, the genres, the languages, the year, the writers, the type, the cast, directors, anything look pretty useful. Oh yeah, you guys are sending me the chat. I'm so sorry. Yeah, cast. Perfect. Sorry, that took me a second. Uh, so yeah, we're going to be querying the cast. And this one's actually a pretty tough one, okay? Because cast is not a key value direct pair. It is actually an array of key values, right? You notice cast is an array of actors. So uh, we're going to actually have to do a bit more complex uh, searching. So I'm glad we're actually doing this one together. That's where the operators come in. So what we want to look at is a specific value in an array. Uh, I can open back up the list of operators. Does anyone have a good idea what operator might be useful for seeing for a specific value in an array? I'll check the chat again. Uh, yeah, yeah, Leo, you're on the money. In, we're gonna be wanting to use the in operator. Okay, I think we have all the ideas here. Now we ought to do pretty, what I think is actually the easiest step, which is writing the query. This is where MongoDB comes in really cool, okay? So uh, I realize I haven't actually covered this lot yet, Let's connect to the database. Uh, that's in the slideshow. So let's go back to the slides. Uh, you wanna go on slide uh, 14. And I think some of you typed in this command. Uh, pretty much to connect to a database, all you need is our username and password, uh, which is hack for impact and passwords WCS. So once you have Mongo SH installed, uh, let's type in that command uh, and then it'll query your fear password. So type in WCS. Uh, and now we're, we're in, we're in the database. Uh, so now let's put all those things together. What uh, a lot of you guys said, uh, uh, and thanks Sophia for putting that in the chat. Uh, let's run this query, okay? So uh, the first thing we wanna do is you need to 
make a database query. So we're going to type DB. This is pretty standard. Uh, and then we want to type the name of the collection we want to query. So like we said before, that's movies. Uh, and then here's where the, the tricky part comes in, but I think it, it is really, really cool in the end. Uh, what value are we querying? Can anyone remind me? Uh, so if we look back at the movie schema, what value are we querying? Uh, Walter about, Edwin. Uh, so Walter Edwin is actually value. That, that's a good question. I, I actually mean, what's the key? Uh, more specifically. So what, what key here? The, the cast. The right? cast. Perfect. Yeah, thank you. Uh, so we're going to be uh, querying the cast. And then from here, this is where we want to use our operator. So we want to use our in operator. OK. And the in operator is looking for that one specific actor. So what was his name again? It was Walter Edwin. Here's where you can just do a quick bit of copy paste. So yeah, Walter Edwin. And then uh, the idea is this is kind of like a JSON operator. So uh, you want to end it with a bracket that kind of uh, finishes your, your operator. And then actually your entire find command, this is something I totally forgot, should be uh, part of a object as well. So put some brackets around your object. And let me fix my typos. So once you've done that, uh, we've finished the query. There might be some uh, typos, and that's where MongoDB gets kind of confusing. Let me actually expand my terminal so you can see that all in one line. So let's kind of review what this is doing. This is looking at the cast uh, key value, and it's an array. So we're, we're doing our, a tricky type of query. We're using the in query. Uh, and let me spell Walter Edwin correctly. Uh, if we do that properly, uh, we'll get an error, of course. So I forgot an uh, uh, end quote. Let me fix that. Uh, and then in needs an array value. OK, so I realize I've made a mistake. I'm sorry. sorry. Uh, this is where it gets kind of tricky. So we actually have a cheat sheet uh, for you guys today if you do these kind of uh, silly mistakes. So uh, I think I got the format a bit off. Let me, let me fix that. Uh, oh, so when you do the in value, uh, it's not just uh, Walter Edwin. You want to wrap that around in array brackets. And the idea is you can look for a lot of uh, specific values. Uh, so once you've run the query, uh, and I'll send that in the chat, so don't worry about copying that. I can send that to you guys. You get uh, a crazy amount of uh, list of movies, right? This is kind of the, the find command. It gives you a list of documents, right? But what you have here is actually like JavaScript. So if you think about this like a variable, you can actually just take the length of this array uh, and you'll get the answer. Uh, and actually that didn't show up. But there's a better way to do that instead of counting the length of the query. I'm actually using the wrong command. Uh, find is probably not the right command. What, what command would be better? Uh, any ideas? Yeah, you guys in the chat. Uh, so instead of doing uh, getting the list of documents, I want to get the length of the document. I want to kind of take a count. Do you guys know what command would be better other than find? Uh, and we covered that in the database, but don't worry if you guys don't know. It's called count documents. So let's type that, count documents. And if you do that, you'll get the answer, which is two. So now let's go back to the crossword puzzle. The idea is we're doing two across. Uh, and here's where you would type TWO. So that was pretty tricky. I'm not going to lie. That was a, a, a tricky one. Yeah, thank Good job, Leo. Uh, that was count docs. Let's do an easier one. Uh, uh, so that was pretty tough. That was number two. Let's do an easier one. Let's do number eight. Who directed the Ace of Hearts? So same idea. Let's actually, the really you know cool thing as a programmer is you, you can just copy a lot of the code you, you wrote. So let's go back to the find command. Uh, uh, and let's just change things so that they make more sense for what we're trying to do here. So uh, we're trying to look at the director, first of all. So that would be in the director's array. Uh, and actually, I realize this is probably not actually a good one because this is another array one. Let's do one with a specific value. Uh, uh, what? Uh, how many movies in the database came out in the year 1924? Let's do that one instead. So for that one, uh, which field will we look at to query? We're looking at the year of 1920, 1924. Uh, so instead of cast, what would we want to create? What, what key? Yeah, we'd want to use year. Good job. Uh, so then let's just let's just change what we just wrote. Uh, so instead of cast, we want to do year. And this is a really simple one. Uh, this is probably what I should have started with. Uh, instead of doing this in operator, we just want a specific value of the year, right? Uh, that value being 1924. So all, all we're going to type is 1924. Uh, and once again, I'm running a find command, but it's asking how many, right? So how many should be a count documents command? So if we run this, how many movies came out in the year 1924? You get the answer nine. Uh, and then we're trying to answer uh, five down. So if you type that in, N-I-N-E, you'll get the answer. Uh, let's do one more. Let's do one more interesting one. Uh, 
uh, but not too tricky one. There's a lot of interesting and not too tricky ones here. And that's kind of what we wanted to, to have here. Uh, let's do this one. How many movies were released between 1908 and 1916? So it looks very similar to this count documents, but instead of looking for a specific year value, we want to range values. Does anyone have any idea how we can make that possible using, for example, some operators that we talked about earlier? So instead of, for example, hard coding the 1924, we want to be a bit more complex with our search. Does it? So we can use, for example, like what operators? And then have any ideas. So we want between 1924 and uh, between 1908 and 1916. Okay, no worries if we if this one's kind of tricky. We're going to be using the less than and greater than operators. Uh, this one's kind of interesting. Uh, so what this would look for look like instead of doing 1924, what we want to do is we want to uh, implement our LTE and greater than E operators. Uh, so what that looks like is the year we want it to be less than or equal to, uh, actually, let's do the greater than, greater than equal to first. So great, greater than or equal to 1908. And then we want it to be less than or equal to 1916. So that's the specific query. So do you see what changed between this and the previous one? Uh, yeah, the first two operators. Good job, uh, Amar. Do you see what changed? Is instead of just hard coding that 1924 value, we we used a more specific search where we used the GTE and LTE operators. And if we run that, uh, we'll get an error. Uh, you'll get a lot of errors uh, just running things. I think I'm missing a parenthesis. Perfect. Uh, uh, the answer is 18. So I have one question. Uh, we got uh, the answer of 18. What happens if instead of saying inclusive, I said exclusive? How would this query have changed? Anyone have any ideas? So I use GT and LT. If I said exclusive search, what operators would I have used instead? So LTE, by the way, stands for less than or equals to. Yeah, perfect. I would just use LT and GT. Uh, perfect. And then, so let's think about this a, a bit. If I use LT and GT, do you think my, my count is going to go up or down? Now, this is not what the crossword puzzle is kind of just a fun exercise. Is my count going to be greater than 18 or less than 18 if I change the LTE to LT or LTE to LT and GTE to GT? I don't have any ideas. Uh, think about it. Is my, my, is my search getting more specific or less specific? Am I being more accepting or less accepting if I change it, uh, if I get rid of the equals? Yeah, it's getting more specific, right? So I'm going to get less documents. And you can actually see that, hopefully. Uh, it's 14. Now, it could have been 18 too, right? Maybe none of these 18 documents actually were, came out in 1908, 1916, but you can see actually four did. So uh, really good job. So 18 was that answer. Uh, what I'm going to do for you guys now is I'm going to send all these in the chat so you can get some like boilerplate searches. Uh, you might realize soon enough that this is really confusing. So what we've put together for you guys is a cheat sheet. Uh, and this kind of puts together a lot of things. For example, the query G we just wrote, uh, the GT and LTE, we, we gave you that code. All you got to do is fill it in. So if you're feeling a bit confused, that's totally fine. I, I see I made a lot of mistakes just now, right? And that's pretty normal. I really recommend using the cheat sheet uh, if you, if you want to kind of just to get a good step, uh, especially for things like uh, nested searching. So when you're looking at, like, for example, how would you search for uh, a rating? This is a really good question, right? Uh, the idea is you have to do some nested searching and that's shown in the cheat sheet. Uh, also, how do you do, for example, uh, other operators? Uh, this one uh, is really tough. Uh, so uh, I'm gonna send you guys this cheat sheet in the chat. Uh, to really leverage that if you have any confusion, but if you really wanna challenge yourself, uh, you know, delete the cheat sheet and, and try to do this on your own. Uh, I think we are good to, in a good spot now that let's just go for it. So we have this crossword puzzle in, in, uh, in front of you. I just sent you guys the cheat sheet. So if you have any specific questions, look there. Uh, you're still gonna have to fill in some values. Uh, and if you really are stuck, then message me uh, and we can talk about it. Uh, uh, does that sound good, guys? Uh, I think we have, we did two of them or three of them together. We have like nine to go or six to go. So uh, uh, really good job. And don't worry about finishing. We actually have pretty not much time left. We'll send out the answer key after this uh, as well. So. Uh, in the end, though, you really want to get the answer. I'm telling you, it's a really good joke. Uh, why are uh, object-oriented programmers so wealthy? Uh, I'm not gonna lie; it's I don't know. I was I was laughing when I heard it. Anyways, uh, I think I think that's good. Uh, 
Cool. And while you guys are doing that, you feel free to mute me. I'll keep doing this some of these uh, questions with you. Uh, if you have a specific question that you want me to do with you, uh, just message me. We can do that one uh, together. Uh, for now, I'll just pick one. Uh, let's do number eight. So I'm, I'm starting with the easy ones. Uh, if you notice, for example, if it's a long question or if it's like a interesting question, I'd say number four and number two are the hardest ones. So uh, do those ones last. Uh, we couldn't really order them how we wanted to because that's not how crossword puzzles work. Uh, but uh, I'll, I'll do the easy ones with you. So let's do, uh, number eight is really similar. Let's do, let's do number nine. What genre is the movie Where Are My Children? Okay. This one's kind of interesting. And honestly, let me, let me check something. Yeah. So we actually have like four or five more minutes left uh, or maybe 10 minutes left. We'll see. So don't worry about finishing. Uh, I think this is really good uh, what we've done so far. So let's do number nine. What genre is the movie Where Are My Children? Uh, so what that looks like is that's going to be part of the genres array, right? So we're going to have to do a find. Uh, but you look at if you look specifically, we're not looking for a mass find. We're looking for one specific document. So what this comes in is instead of doing a find command, what I recommend that you guys do is do a find one command. This will give you just the one document that you're looking for. Uh, and the idea is uh, from there, you can treat that like an object and, and look for specific fields in it. So uh, let's look back at the movie structure. Remember, this is uh, the genres array. So uh, instead of cast, we'll be looking at genres. And then what specific value are we looking for, right? Uh, we're looking for, uh, oh, sorry, this is my bad. Uh, I, I've been querying the wrong things all the time. Uh, this is not genre, where are my children? What, what am I actually supposed to be querying? Uh, this is kind of a trick question in a way. Uh, what field should I be looking at for where are my children? That's like the name of the movie, right? What, what, what value here would represent my name of my movie? If any of you guys have any ideas? And no worries if you don't, there's a lot of fields here. Leo says the title. Which, yeah, perfect. Yeah. Title. So yeah, sorry, it took me a, a while to get to the chat. Uh, thanks for bringing that up. So yeah, this is actually just a straight title field. So uh, hopefully this makes it a bit easier. Uh, so let's get rid of all this uh, extraneous code. All we're looking at is the title field, right? And then it's called, where are my children? Hopefully I typed this correctly. Uh, there's a print. Uh, question mark at the end. Yeah, where are my children? Perfect. Uh, so then you can end quotes. Uh, and then remember, all this searching has to go in a object structure. So I forgot that here. Uh, so this is what your query should look like, right? You're querying title, where are my children? And then the idea is we're doing a find one. So this won't give me a list of values. This will give me one specific value or no values if nothing fits the criteria. Let's look at what that would look like. So let's say I made a typo. If I say, where are my children? A? Uh, nothing shows up, right? I get a null search. Uh, and that makes sense, right? Because nothing satisfies my criteria. But if I typed it properly, I get the one object that uh, uh, it, I'm looking for. The movie, you can see here, right? To check everything is right. You can look at the title value and it says, where are my children? Now, this is a kind of pain to look through, but remember, we're working in uh, JavaScript uh, if you want to get a specific programming language. So we can literally just uh, extract the genres field and you'll get your answer. Uh, it is drama. Uh, so that's pretty cool. I'll send that one in the chat. Uh, but uh, that kind of shows you, right? Whatever you query, you can actually get specific uh, variables from it, uh, values from it, uh, the kind of same way as you query. So I just sent that one in the chat. Uh, that should also be on the cheat sheet. So then the idea is for uh, nine down, you should be able to type drama. Cool. And I realize I actually haven't written the answers in. Let me, let me get that. Uh, written in. So yeah, I, I would kind of recommend the best way to do it is on paper, but I realize not a, how would you have this printed out? So for now, you can just kind of write these down in your head uh, or use whatever Adobe PDF software you have. Uh, let me, let me write. So yeah, this would be drama. This was a uh, two and this was nine. Which one was nine? Oh, five. Cool. So if we did everything correctly, this should be, uh, it should all work out uh, in the end. And really what you're trying to get is 10 across. So if you want to like, you know, be cheeky, you don't really actually have to do a lot of these, but I think it's a good experience, especially because questions like seven and three are kind of hard. So uh, I'd really recommend doing all of them. Let's do one more together. I think we have time. Let me just check. 
Uh, yeah, we have like five more minutes left, so I'm actually going to clear my screen. Uh, uh, any recommendations on which one we want to do? Uh, we could do. We could do number three. I think number three is a really interesting one. It's a tricky one though, because this requires both uh, schemas, both collections here. Uh, for number three, uh, I'll read it out. Which, which movie did Donna Smith comment about? Uh, the idea is we don't actually want to start in the movies database, uh, movies collection. We actually have to start in the comments collection and we have to look for Donna Smith's comment. So uh, let's first find Don, Donna Smith's comment, okay? So let me uh, clear my screen. Actually, I realize you can't clear. Uh, so let me, uh, let me just do the query, okay? So we're going to be querying the comments uh, database. So you can see instead of db.movies, I'm going to be doing db.comments. And then if we look more specifically at what the question is asking for, it's saying, which movie did Donna Smith comment about? So we got to find Donna Smith's comment. This is kind of like the one comment once again. So we really only have to do a find one. Uh, and what we're looking for is for the uh, name to be Donna Smith. So this is actually a very simple uh, uh, query, but it gets very layered. And this is kind of where you can think about joins uh, in SQL. This is where joins in MongoDB kind of work. Uh, so we're looking for a specific name, Donna Smith. Notice you can do uh, one quotation, double quotation, uh, it both works. Uh, and let's, let's search this up and see what we see. Uh, and you see Donna Smith's comment, right? Uh, so the name was Donna Smith. Uh, the idea is how would I trace this? So I have Donna Smith's ID. How would I trace this comment to the movie that she was commenting about? Uh, it's not really clear yet. What, what, what was Donna Smith commenting about? Uh, does anyone have any ideas how I could trace this comment back to its movie? Uh, and feel free to type it in the chat. So what I have right now is I have uh, ID of Donna Smith. I have a name, email. I have a movie ID. I have the text that represents a comment and I have the date it was commented on. Uh, I'll check the chat. Yeah, really good idea. The movie ID, right? That's what I want to use, right? Uh, so let's, let's uh, extract the movie ID. Really, I'll just copy that same comment. And here's my movie ID. And you notice this represents an object ID just like the movies have their own object ID. Uh, so uh, let's do kind of some reverse engineering. We can go back now to the movies array and use this object ID to find what movie she was commenting about. Uh, and uh, does anyone have ideas what that would look like? Uh, feel free to help me out. Uh, you can say that a lot. I'm going to be doing, or right in the chat, I'm going to be uh, querying the movies uh, collection. I'm going to be doing a find one once again, right? I'm looking just for one movie. You notice whenever you do a find one, you can also do a find, but a find one's nice in that it gives you one specific object, not an array. Uh, where you kind of have to uh, uh, extract the first object. Anyways, what we want to do is we want to query the underscore ID parameter. Uh, and I copied that object ID from the previous command. Uh, so that's what I'm querying for, that, that specific object. Uh, and let me open up my screen a bit. So the idea is if this all works out, and I realize we're running out of time, let me just run this for a second. Uh, we got something. Let me comment uh, what the title is of this movie. Uh, and the answer is the informer. Now, in the question, it says drop the duck. So if your answer, uh, if you want to track that answer, the title would be informer. Uh, yeah, great job, Telman. Yeah, no, you, you, no, you got it on the money. Uh, you don't really need the brackets, but uh, everything you got, right? So uh, before you guys leave, and thanks for uh, joining me today. That was probably the hardest question here, and you guys got it. Uh, three down would be informer. And the way we did that was using IDs. That's a really cool thing about MongoDB, uh, and it allows you to connect a lot of things. Okay. Thanks a lot uh, for sticking with me. Uh, we'll go back to the main breakout room just for a recap. And then uh, you guys can keep working on this uh, and we'll send the answer key right after the workshop uh, and you guys can check your answers. Uh, hopefully you guys will get the answer joke and you can let me know what it is because I actually don't even know what it is. Uh, okay, see you guys. Thank you. Did anyone get the answer yet? I, I doubt it. There was a lot of, a lot of work there. <laughs> Does anyone have any guesses to why our object-oriented programs are so wealthy? <laughs> I guess it's good that you guys don't have the answer. That means you're going to have to keep working. Uh, and maybe we can send out the answer in our recap too, just uh, to not leave you guys hanging. Uh, True. I think everyone mentioned, but we'll be sending uh, the answer to key out with all the commands so that you guys can check your answers. Uh, and then feel free to reach out if you have any questions about a specific command. I know it gets tricky. Hopefully you guys already have the cheat sheet uh, that your uh, group mates uh, sent to you. Oh yeah, uh, Andrew, that was pretty good. 
Uh, hopefully you have the cheat sheet so you can use that for the time being until we send you the answer key. Yeah. And if you guys want to learn more about databases, we've put together a list of resources that you can um, use. It's in the slideshow on, I believe, like slide 14. Um, and then there's a little bit about what Women in CS is. If you guys ever want to join us, we are in one of the rooms in the first floor of Siebel CS. So join us anytime. And then of course, there's also Hack for Impact if anyone wants to talk about that. Yeah, Hack for Impact is a really cool organization. Uh, pretty much what we do is we build software uh, to empower nonprofit organizations that don't necessarily have the technical resources. And it's really cool because we get to kind of do uh, full-time uh, software engineering that you don't necessarily learn in school. Uh, so here are a couple of projects we worked on. Uh, feel free to uh, DM, us, DM us if you have any questions. We're always recruiting every semester for designers, uh, software developers, uh, and just uh, we love, love people. So feel free to look into us. Yeah, same thing um, with women in CS. We're actually opening up applications, I believe, this semester. So if you guys want to get involved in either Hack for Impact or Women in CS, just reach out to any of us and we'll be happy to answer any questions. Okay. Um, thank you everyone so much for coming today. If you guys could fill out the feedback form, it would mean everything to us just so that we can learn how to improve these workshops. Um, and then if you're part of WCS, just make sure to scan this QR code so that you can earn a point for coming to today's workshops. The point code is in the chat. And so is the link. Yeah, thanks for coming, guys. Uh, cool. Thank you. Good job, everyone.